Sunny Mr is a renowned music composer, producer, sound engineer and live engineer with 20 years of experience. He has worked on Bollywood movies including Barfi, Dangal and Ludo and has toured globally with Arijit Singh. Sunny has collaborated with artists like Diljit Dosanjh, Shalmali and Nikita Gandhi and has won numerous awards and has earned praises from the internationally acclaimed music composer Nilam Kiran. Welcoming Sunny MR in his own studio, <laughs> the Court Father production hello, hello, in Bombay. Hello, 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 and uh, thank you for doing this. Absolutely. And uh, for for the humongous body of work that you have, uh, it's it's uh, a very uh, amazing uh, opportunity for all of our viewers to uh, get you know. It's an opportunity for me, man, <laughs> <laughs> to speak. <laughs> so thank you for doing this <laughs> and um, jumping straight to the. Uh, conversation. Yeah. Uh, my first topic uh, of discussion would be is, uh, is is something that's related to the integrity of music and sound in today's times. Yeah. Now, uh, you being a musician as well as a music producer as well as an engineer, both, um, I, I want you to throw some light on uh, how important it is in today's times to to integrate uh, the writing process with the sound. Absolutely. I think sound was always relevant. It's just that bahut saal bahut logo ne ignore kiya. But even if you listen to some olden recordings, mm. these sound really, really good even yes. now. Yes. Uh, with advancement of technology, obviously everything becoming ev mm. like digital or jo bhi hum mm. log, in whatever way mm. we can mm. put mm. it across. Uh, this integration in terms of monitoring or else if you say like just integrating the kind of sound design you want. The sound mm. design here doesn't mean sound design for films. But sound design for music, it is totally, it has to totally work hand in hand. Mm. So in today's time, I would say a song is 50% the song itself and 50% the music around it. Correct. And for that music to be integrated in it, you obviously need to have some idea of sound. Correct. Sure. 100%. Uh, everything is becoming production heavy and yes. you know, we are experimenting much more and more. So, uh, I think this importance is going to increase furthermore mm. as we go mm. ahead. And um, there's no looking back. 100%. In fact, uh, I'd like to uh, add an um, uh, rather, you know, elucidate a few more things around it. Uh, and I would love to quote uh, one case where both of us have worked on a common project, which was Kheriath, Kheriath. in 2019. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was one unique experience because uh, remember the day you called me and yeah. you said that there is some sort of issue in the electronic piano electronic track. Piano, yeah. But then I had to clarify that it was actually the preamp saturation that, that and it was deliberate and right. it was, so I think it is also, um, I'd like to know your thoughts on how perspective based it is yes. to, to, you know, because uh, right now the instrumental writing of a song is no more uh, uh, about just writing the parts, yeah. but it's about the intensity with which you play them and, and what your signal chain is further. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, uh, why don't you throw some light as on, on Khairiyat as well as uh, the song you produced, uh, Ha Mai Galat from, ha mai galat, yeah. uh, because the, the guitar tones are just amazing. The very, uh, it's a very juicy track yeah, yeah, yeah. as far as the production is concerned, the writing is concerned. And even as far as the sound design is concerned, I, would, I, I also want you to talk about sound design in music, in songs, that how it is different from a film sound design. And uh, how have you been integrating these things into the into these few known songs, uh, few of the many known songs you've worked on? Okay, absolutely. Talking about Khairiyat, so as you said, perspective. Uh, what happens is like uh, we get a lot of, I get a lot of tracks from all the other producers to work on. And this was one of those tracks. And for me, I wanted the piano to like shine a little more. Mm. And that's why I was like, okay, uh, make the, there is a problem with the thing. But then you said, uh, you know, you described me what you went through what you were thinking at that point of time and then I understood it okay this is what your perspective was mm. and it helped a lot in today's time I don't think so we should limit ourselves which is what mm. you did which was amazing and it was uh, kind of an eye opener for me working on that track again that okay this is what he has thought mm -hmm. let me see what kind of ideation mm -hmm. it brings on the table so mm -hmm. all these songs if you see they have uh, this um, you know unique sound identity I would say 
uh, there's a certain si- shine or a sparkle whatever you would like to call it mm-hmm. as uh it just depends on uh, like the whole chain right so the chain in today's uh, i would specifically say bollywood music is uh, the composer uh, composes the song he gives it to a producer multiple producers maybe they all work on it mm. and then it is played to the director the actor the Correct. producer there are multiple layers of layers it of so yes. uh, to achieve that is what the main task is mm. that like you know your uh perception of it then mine Correct. then uh, pritam das then the director then the producer and mm-hmm. i think the day when you can convince all of them is when you achieve the correct. <laughs> correct otherwise correct. convincing is the hardest part correct. you know correct correct, correct. uh talking about hame galat uh, hame galat just happened i would say out of chance like you know we were just trying out a lot of mm-hmm. things and uh, i wanted to experiment and i found this very nice sample from somewhere which is like an african thing which sounds mm-hmm. like a guitar but it is not okay so i took that chopped it and blah 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 mm-hmm. then came the sound design now the sound design here is basically uh, it's a very old term uh, when you go into synthesis mm. uh, people from who makes synth tones mm. are actually called as sound designers okay so uh, it comes from that mm-hmm. have, these days we have been seeing it a lot because pritam da probably is the only one putting in that credit mm-hmm. sound design mm. so it's typically not only limited to synths per se but it is also the overall shaping of the track mm-hmm. maybe like you said you distorted the piano for a certain feel maybe i took the guitar i put a sheen which is usually like electric guitar you cut the highs i pushed it up Correct. so i think you know uh, uh, the first thing what we all have to remember is don't limit yourself mm, exactly and if you limit yourself mm-hmm. then things fall apart for sure yeah. exactly in fact uh, uh, what i've been experiencing and and the whole uh, analog domain that i've been you know uh, getting more and more deep into and of course because of fellows like you who've been really inspiring all of the other people in the industry to you know buy more okay. gear and all you know so um i think uh, it's 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 uh, it's a very beautiful process for me to realize that um committing to certain sounds is uh, very crucial yeah now as far as uh, the analog domain is concerned we don't get to commit uh, uh, sorry we as far as the software domain is concerned we don't we we are flexible to not commit to a particular eq today and then we can change it change it tomorrow as far as analog domain is concerned a, a very beautiful part of it is that i am able to commit to my tone right there if i want a particular uh, you know say if 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 i am tracking guitars for yeah. example yeah. while writing so for me writing and so- sonic shaping happens hand in hand together and yeah. you know because the times are such that we uh cannot wait for a sound engineer to add a timed delay to create a certain effect absolutely because we are so well equipped in today's times that you know we can immediately shift uh you know a delay to some other delay and change the reverbs to whatever we want within few seconds correct um how do you decide to commit to a particular sound to a particular sonic that if i have for example uh let's say the example of brahmastra yeah. like how we worked on the score and uh, for example if we take the srk scene where i had done the basic writing of the score i the score was recorded everything and then it was finally sent to you for you know final polishing yeah. where you added certain synths and yeah. all uh, and because we were of course obviously as always on a time crunch what how did you how do you make sure that uh, what tone do you have to commit to what is the signal chain that you want to commit to uh, i want the i want the viewers to understand this process from you yeah. that when you receive an already written piece already produced piece and there are certain embellishments or garnishings that you are supposed to do without disturbing the piece which which uh, i think everybody would agree that the score has turned out you yeah. know uh, very well and it has been appreciated um, and and uh, it is also to emphasize that it's a team work you know Absolutely. and and uh, how we work in a synergy uh, to achieve one product and and it's the end product that matters to all of us uh, in that process mm. being uh, as as uh, as uh, you are often the last uh, <laughs> coin in the chain, chain. <laughs> where there's immense amount of pressure on you uh, you yeah. know how do you first of all tackle yeah. that pressure 
and number two how do you commit to that signal chain how do you make a decision that this is where i want to stand so the thing is it's it's a little easy for me to okay. be very honest because mm. i come from the ancient times mm. i've seen <laughs> the tapes from the stone age yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i've seen the tapes i've seen hyatt mm. adat like i was lucky enough to start at that point of time so there was no option to re uh, you know like like as you said like adding a reverb reverb is recorded that's Correct. it Correct. you can't change it Correct. the voice is recorded with the Correct. reverb or uh, uh, older examples of mughal azam where lata mm. ji had to walk into another room yes. to do the uh, you know alap thing yes sense of commitment i think uh, in today's time is lesser because of because of the way we are growing mm. in general mm. but i would consider it as a marriage like you know, it's a wedding mm. so uh, when you are marrying someone you have to commit to the person you can't be like okay today you know mm. tomorrow ंग Uh, there is a very thin line between record producers and music producers the earliest record producers would guide the band or whatever mm. to create a certain yeah. sound create yeah. a certain piece of music maybe they'll say this piece is not sounding mm. nice you guys should try something else or some lines in today's time uh, and most of the engineers were record uh, record producers in today's time music producers are same it's just that music producers also in uh, you know in vague terms program or like you know make the beats they're basically the writers they're, they're basically, basically the instrumental yeah, writers yeah, instrumental in writers. india we call the instrumental writers as Correct. music producers as music producers yeah. so uh, it's very important for them to develop a se- develop a sense of sound because i've always told uh, that when a product goes from a producer's hand mm. the engineer should not have more than 20 to 30% left to Correct. do and that 20 to 30% also most of the times people have come said what is the difference between this song when you gave mm. because i've done some breakdowns mm. and when shada makes we can't figure out the difference like it will take you few years to figure out the difference exactly. but i am very happy with what difference you know shada has come in and uh, brought on Correct. the table Correct. uh so similar way when working on the score my first idea is to mix what you have already given mm. and see which places i can just add some things to mo- beautify it mm. there are many pieces of yours many pieces of other people which i have not touched as like no this already sounds yeah. as is mm. and because pritam da somehow trusts me with that process mm. so it's a little uh, like you know not that difficult for me but i do have to take uh, approvals from mm. so uh, when you mix something pro- uh, uh, properly like when you are recording most of the times i have seen people recording it in any balance we are just recording we'll balance it later yes but yes. i think that's a wrong approach i was approach. about to come to that yeah, actually yeah that's that's totally a wrong mm, approach mm, you mm. balance it properly when you're recording live rhythm you have to ensure that you're listening to it at the level what your final mix the would be correct gain stage correct gain stage yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right so uh, so i think that is where most of the people end up uh, I, i would not say wrong but you know diverting to some other way change the uh, perspective yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, the first idea is that mix it and see how much because mm. it's very easy to do over mm. <laughs> it's very mm. difficult to keep it as mm. minimal as mm-hmm. possible yeah i think everything works in ha- hand in hand i think i i would like to add to this uh, you know as far as arrangement is concerned the art of arrangement and writing instrumental music uh, is also very inclusive of uh, the balance so yes. so when you are writing an arrangement be it in a in a midi domain or on a staff domain whatever it is i think the basic musical balance gets decided right there it has to that be. a cello has to yeah. play softer than a viola yeah, yeah, and the absolutely. horns have to play at this level or yeah. uh, or this with this loudness enough to you know play in unison with the other section yeah. so i think the balances get sorted right there and i think 200%. you have pointed out it very rightly that uh, uh, you know when when people track they ignore the musical balance you know Absolutely. and i think uh, that gives a lot of pain in the post uh, and uh, uh, secondly uh, with this point i would like to come to a very important question is that when um, as as far as and the audience is i want the audiences to the viewers to know this uh, to have a better understanding of it that in today's times uh where where the technology is um uh very local 
very liberal very, very flexible and very available uh, adding a reverb adding a delay is very easy adding compression is very easy and with the people who know their craft who have an understanding of these processings they already send you a well balanced yeah. musically well balanced track i want you to give a hint to the viewers as of as you rightly said that that last 10 20% so for example when i am making music i i uh, especially my independent tracks my balance my sound design everything is 80 85% there it has to be done what is it that what is it about that last 15% yeah. that uh, a shadab or an eric or a hanish what is it that engineers bring at the end and why is it so crucial that the common people are not like my mom when she hears a song she says acha to gana hai yeah. and when the mix is and when we are at mix draft g3 g7 y9 she says sab to same lag raha hai so i think uh, but because we are addressing the the aspiring music producers music engineers yeah. who want to be behind the scenes and you know at the creative side of things uh, how how would you sum it yeah as of what is that last 15% percent? so it's it's again going back to the first conversation it's about perspective now you bring something to the table i bring something to the table then there has to be one who has to understand what has been brought to the table mm. and how to improve it so mm. most of the music producers because they are producing the music uh, tend to not intentionally but tend to um, kind of ignore things like voice vocal mm. balance mm. Uh, mm. vocal shine or vocal reverbs or whatever you call it and most of the engineers this is what they are fixing 90% of the times correct so um, uh, many a times it has happened like uh, especially in this uh, uh, i would say uh, getting to preetam da is like a very important part of this conversation <laughs> because he's one of those guys who's uh, who's changed my life in multiple ways and there mm-hmm. have been times where uh, producers have sent track and because i have been also mixing so i suddenly treat it as a mixing engineer mm-hmm. and i have uh, done like a zero de- like pull down everything and then start yep. again and i have given and for me the track is sounding great like mm. wow i brought something completely new and pritam mm. like gana hil gaya <laughs> song has moved you know it's it's just yeah. not the same what i heard yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. when the producers are executing it that certain mm. balance is what he is liking and if a second stage producer or if the engineer can't maintain it mm. then it defeats the whole purpose mm. so that is where this 10 15% lag is down because uh, working for uh, like you know preetam da amit trivedi specifically mm. they have a set balance at the time of music production they don't want to change it Correct. they want to get why these mixes go to g3 y3 or z1 yes. Yes. is because you're trying to keep similar musical balance, balance. uh and the vibe of yes, it yes. Uh, no matter how good you mix no matter how good you produce if the vibe is not sorted it is it is just of yes, no use any yes, music production any mixer yes. is not of use so this is what they are bringing in mm. to the table. They, they are bringing in the engineers are bringing in that 10 15% of vocal which you have ignored thinking that are my music is sounding mm. great so you know let's no, no, let I don't it. I don't ignore the vocals huh? <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i'm a good boy <laughs> so it's just huh. like another perspective to it another person's brain to it Sorry. it just changes the game completely and it's sometimes it's difficult for a common person to understand it i would say but uh, probably they are not able to understand that they are enjoying this yes. more because of it yes yeah. yes yes in fact i would like to uh, mention do a special mention for pritam da here because Uh, it has often happened that i have just tweaked the master compressor a bit or maybe changed the high shelf of of the master strip or maybe you know changed the vocal level by lay, say half db or one db dada catches it yeah, yeah. he just says that the balance is off <laughs> balance and and i think i think it's something uh, it's it's a gift yeah. uh, and uh, just the way you appreciate it i i have mutual uh, feelings on that Uh, as of how dada has actually been very elemental in shaping our lives uh, 